Nicola Sturgeon is to ban English people from Scotland, and the SNP continues to be a split over Nicola Sturgeon's leadership. Hello everyone and welcome to today's uh, program. Uh, we have the latest from the SNP scandal and how Nicola Sturgeon's leadership has been completely undermined over the last uh, few weeks, especially uh, with the situation with the Alex Salmon inquiry and also the way she's handled the vaccine program in Scotland. But before we start the video, a quick shout out and welcome to all the new members of the channel. Welcome to you all. Uh, as you know, uh, we have the, the membership where you guys can actually get more out of this channel, including the Q&As that we do on uh, Mondays, but also Wednesdays, which is today, uh, we have our Zoom video calls with uh, the members, which is after this video, I'm gonna basically get ready and uh, talk to you guys. Uh, if you're a new member and you wonder where we post all the updates, it's on the community tab on the channel. If you go on the main channel, click on the community tab. That's where I post the updates until we finally launch our Discord page then it will be easier for you guys to find. Let's get on with the video because The Sun has now reported that Nicola Sturgeon is now considering to close the Scotland-England border uh, because she's not too happy uh, with the, the new uh, quarantine system that Boris Johnson has implemented in England. Um, so as you know, this hotel quarantine uh, program has just started uh, where people from the red list, there are certain countries from South America, South Africa, uh, that if, if they come from there, they're part of the red list and they have to stay in a hotel for a few days uh, until they you know, take the test and everything else. Um, Nicola Sturgeon has banned every single person from every single country from entering Scotland. And uh, she's now criticizing Boris Johnson because he has a different policy. And because of that, she wants to consider to actually close the border to anyone. Uh, coming from England to Scotland. This is a bit drastic because she's now warning uh, that, you know, well, this two versions of the policy is not really helping. Scotland is demanding that all arrivals from anywhere abroad self-isolate in a hotel for 10 days. And uh, the, the thing is, she says that she fears that people will use the route to England as a backdoor to get to Scotland. Firstly, <laughs> I mean, at this point, uh, imagine being so desperate that you know you go to all the way to England to go and to just enter Scotland. A lot of people who are in favor of these sort of policies are probably just seeing the same. Well, actually, that makes sense. Yes, on paper, technically speaking, uh, logically, yes, that could happen. You could be in favor. But the real reason that she's doing this has nothing to do with this. She doesn't really care about any of this. The real reason is that she's been doing this for the past few years. Every single policy area, she tries to find an excuse to divide the country. She, she, this is simply a political move to then create more division between uh, the Scotland and the rest of the UK uh, to make it easier for uh, Westminster to eventually give her her second Scottish referendum. That's all she cares about, to completely split up the country and uh, she doesn't really care about the consequences. So for those people who are in favor of uh, the logic of the policy, also there's a problem with this logic because she's now saying that her main duty is to try to protect Scotland. Well, technically, it's to protect the SNP voters because she doesn't really care about anyone else who doesn't vote for the SNP. Uh, and she says that if it meant closing the border uh, that you know, we have to do, then it may come to that. Uh, she has said that we need a more effective solution. And she's said that uh, she's pushing for all four UK nations to adopt hair blanket hotel quarantine policy. So there is a problem with the, the devolution that we've done. Uh, we're creating this uh, pseudo-federalism, which uh, is not really proper federalism. So if you want to go completely federalist, do it properly, uh, whether it's like, like the German system or the United States of America, um, or just make the decisions that affect the whole country, the whole union, do it from Westminster, and uh, everything else that's actually more local, make it more local than it is. We don't need a Scottish Parliament or a Welsh, Welsh Assembly. We actually need more power to the local people in Scotland, in Wales, in West Midlands, in South East London, South East England, that's how you actually localize situations. You don't, you, you don't create another centralized body in Holyrood to decentralize. Uh, I think the SNP and Nicola Sturgeon should be more worried about everything else that they're doing, whether it's uh, the state of Scotland right now or the state of their own party. Joanna Cherry, one of the members of the SNP who's recently been uh, uh, sacked from the front bench of the SNP uh, because uh, she's now on the other side. She's against Nicola Sturgeon. She's taken Alex Salmon's side in this whole saga, the battle between Salmon and Sturgeon. The, and uh, uh, she's been uh, attacked. Uh, she's been receiving a lot of attacks from 
the SMP minions. And that continues. This started about a couple of weeks ago when she first uh, was, uh, well, was sacked. And uh, she's now reported to the police. She actually tweeted saying that I've spent the morning arranging uh, enhanced security at my home and reporting another incident of concern to the police. Uh, they're giving her phone calls, they're going outside the house. It is understood that uh, concerns were raised after neighbors spotted someone who appeared to be loitering in the street outside of uh, Ms. Cherry's home. Uh, so this is the party that Nicola Sturgeon is proud of. These are your people, the SMP minions, the cybernauts on the internet harassing people. This is the state of your party and your SMP government, and you're more worried about banning people coming from England. This is all political. She doesn't really care about people. She should care about how she's running her government and how her own special advisors are taking advantage of the establishment that they created. The taxpayer in Scotland and actually across the UK are funding her government uh, to actually be a government, not party political. Uh, but she's now been urged to take action over a culture of contempt at the heart of her SNP government. Uh, so the, the, the Tories in Scotland and also other parties have now raised concerns about over the social media use of uh, the First Minister's taxpayer-funded special advisors. So these are, because it's taxpayer-funded, these are official formal accounts, um, they are now using it for party political purposes, which is absolutely out of uh, control. So like, imagine if Chris Whitty from the, the British state, because you know he's taxpayer-funded, comes out and starts ranting about some sort of polit party political move, whether it's left-wing or right-wing, uh, there will be an outrage from Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, I don't know why I thought of Chris Bitty, but <laughs> it happens. Uh, she should be more worried about how her propaganda machine is spreading everywhere. Then The National, one of the publications in Scotland, has now been uh, spreading more fake news and, again, propaganda in her defence. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Neil was on this morning on ITV uh, criticising Scotland's uh, or the SNP government's uh, vaccination plan, uh, program. And uh, this guy in the National actually came to write an article saying that uh, the viewers, this morning viewers, basically the British public and everyone in Scotland is now attacking Andrew Neil because he's wrong. In this article, they included two tweets as an example of the people, the general public who are concerned about uh, Andrew Neil's um, uh, comments saying that uh, the SNP has not performed. And also in the article saying that, oh, Andrew Neil is launching a new Fox News channel in the UK. Sure. Uh, <laughs> this whole um, saga about the new channel is also fascinating. But let's look at the first tweet. The British public, ordinary people in Scotland. One of them is called Yes, Scotland's Future, which is an account to promote uh, isolationism uh, and separatism in Scotland. This is a pro SNP account, uh, which is attacking Andrew Neil. The second account is even more interesting. Murray Foot. <laughs> this guy is being hired as the chief media, um, well, the, the head of media, I believe, or social media for the SNP. I mean, yeah, these are these are ordinary the people, the general public, the outrage against uh, what Andrew Neil said on TV. Again, I think the SNP need to be more worried about what they're doing with their propaganda. There, again, there's an article talking about how Boris Johnson's anti-Scottish government is driving support for independence in Scotland, according to the former Welsh Labour First Minister. So the former Welsh Labour First Minister has come out to, to talk about Scottish politics, saying how Boris Johnson is anti-Scottish, God knows where that got that from. And, uh, and because of that, the Welsh Labour are now supporting the SNP. I'm, I'm not really sure what's happening here. But then the publications in Scotland are uh, promoting this propaganda. We have talked about uh, the wrongdoings of the SNP. We know, I told you guys about the postal vote. Now, the postal vote campaign is being manipul manipulated by the SNP. There is a link, postalvote.scot. When you put it on your browser, it goes to an SNP page. Uh, which, you know, you can register for postal voting, but it's an SMP website. Uh, so people would think that this is just a neutral website, uh, but uh, it goes to the SMP, which, you know, again, it will fill your head with uh, propaganda. And uh, one of our subscribers actually emailed one of the members of the Scottish Parliament, an SMP member, uh, about this. And uh, the member actually replied to that email from our subscriber. Uh, and I'm gonna show you this uh, email because it's absolutely fascinating. So the email was from uh, Stephen uh, McPherson to uh, Stuart 
Stevenson, MSP, a member of the Scottish Parliament. Uh, this guy, actually, Stuart Stevenson, actually replied saying that, uh, firstly, this is an effort to make postal voting as simple a process for people as possible. And he said, compare the postal vote Dot Scott, which is the website I showed you, to the actual official electoral registration officer's website, which is that blue link you can see. Uh, and it says, compare the two and see which one is more memorable and more accessible. Um, yeah, the first one is more memorable, postalvote.scot, and it's also more accessible. When you put it in Google, postalvote Scotland, that comes up, that's the first link. <laughs> Secondly, he says, if you go to postalvote.scot, uh, you just, you know, fill in your details and register for postal votes, and the, the form does not go to the Scottish National Party. But, yep, yeah, that's not the concern. The concern <laughs> is that you go on that website and all you see is SNP material. Because the third point is also the same thing. Thirdly, it says that uh, all political parties are entitled to receive uh, kind of data about the, uh, the electors and all that. Uh, and uh, it, we're not really harvesting kind of inf data or in information. Yeah, again, that's not the concern that we have. The concern is not necessarily the data that you're collecting or whether you are or not. The, the problem is that people go on that page to register and all they see is just SMP logos and SMP material. That's the problem. I'm not even accusing of the SMP of taking people's data without permission. Oh my God. Now, let's everybody calm down because these could be the, the final days of the Nicola Sturgeon's leadership. So let's just be nice to her. Now, to finish this video on a lighter note, news in your world. We have uh, the latest story from one of our subscribers one of our members, uh, Paddy, uh, who's actually gone through a very tough period for the past few years. Since uh, March 2016, he's been battling uh, as a single father uh, for the custody of his children and everything else. And this story actually talks about uh, the, the, how the system is unfair at times against men in this country. Uh, he said that uh, initially back in 2016, his first battle was uh, against a family uh, nurse who refused to actually uh, deal with him. Uh, again, he actually went to Joe Cox, the MP, who's no longer with us. At the time, Joe Cox actually helped him uh, to win that battle. Uh, and uh, then the second uh, battle that he had was on uh, social housing. Uh, he, had a, he was living with his uh, grandparents, I believe, with, uh, with, her, with his uh, eldest uh, daughter at the time, and uh, in a very uncomfortable situation because he was a single father. And he had a female friend who was currently, at the time, was living in a two-bedroom flat. Um, she applied for the same social housing as him, but she was prioritized, even though he was a single father with a small daughter, uh, not having actual home. Uh, that was another battle. And then, but finally, there was also another is other issues with courts and him being accused of being an alcoholic. Eventually, he actually won the custody of both uh, girls and uh, now they're living together uh, much happier for again four or five years later uh, the situation has uh, improved massively he's won the custody they have a home and he's living a much better life thank you so much paddy for sharing your story there is uh, the system is at times definitely unfair when it comes to men uh, when it comes to single fathers and uh, which has to be addressed and i'm sure a lot of other subscribers uh, some of them could be in a similar situation uh, so thanks again for sending the story if you guys also want to be featured or get a chance to be featured in our news in your world segment feel free to send us your positive stories anything that's good in your life to lacy at myatc.co.uk. I do not forget to include any pictures or videos that are related to the story. Thanks again for watching. I'm Maya TC, and I'll see you guys in the next video.